Mission 10. Two lights will open the sealed door and guide the hunter to the deep underground. Guide us for the hunters. Chapter 9, Clause 3. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm NoGuy21. Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry. In the last episode, we were chasing after Arius to an oil field, but it caught on fire because he summoned a flaming minotaur. Fantastic. I also raged trying to jump on top of a pipe. To collect a blue orb. But hey, we now have a rocket launcher. Post commentary today because, well, um, Windows updates fucked over my audio settings again. Fantastic. You'd think you would recognize that my microphone is plugged in and have that set to default like it should be. But no. Can't have that at all. Ugh. So we're doing post commentary today because I didn't feel like redoing an hour. Mainly because of my own ineptitude. So that's fun. As you can see, I'm busy trying to figure out if I should upgrade the rocket launcher or not. Or maybe the Vendetta. I don't decide to do either of that. I decide to, you know, save up my orbs to upgrade Rebellion later on in the video. Whether or not it's a good thing in the long run, I can't say. But, uh, anyway. Time to start mission 10. The mission is a short one. It's literally just two rooms. The starter room and the boss room. Fortunately for you, if you want to farm up a bunch of orbs, the starting room has infinite respawning wizards. So the main objective is to open up the gate in front of us. To do that, we need to hit two switches in a rather quick succession back to back. Anyway, here's our blue orb fragment for the level. And the secret mission is actually on the center with the flaming skulls. Touch the one on the right and we go in. But I think for the uh, most part, I'm probably either going to A, be silent for most of this episode, or do a lot of cutting out as I uh, edit things down. It's the next mission where I'm going to be doing that a lot because of a certain area. But I'm just going to be busy collecting around the orbs around the room and uh, basically fighting enemies, so enjoy. Okay, secret room level 13. It's still up a bunch of monkeys. And I'm basically just figuring out how the rocket launcher compares as to uh, everything else in my arsenal. Because we only have one more sword and gun combination for weaponry, which we will get in the next mission. 
But like I said, this mission was mainly just me fucking around with the rocket launcher, trying to figure out how it works, finding out that uh, it does have AOE capabilities, and it does go through uh, walls and floors. So terrain is not an issue, but you can't really do anything in the air because uh, Dante needs to be standing on the ground for the rocket launcher to actually shoot its payload. And despite the weapon description, it does not do heat seeking. It does not auto lock onto enemies. I'm guessing the reason why is because uh, human technology cannot lock onto the specific heat wavelength of demons. Or at least that's my headcanon reason as to why it doesn't do auto lock on or real world uh, reason. It's probably because of uh, technical limitations of uh, the engine they were using. Or they didn't know how to make it work. Most likely it's uh, not being able to figure out how to make it work correctly. Most likely answer. Anyway, nothing but a bunch of monkeys to slice and dice and stab and, you know, shoot to oblivion. Real simple, easy mission. But hey, on the plus side, post-commentary means I can actually talk about things besides uh, what's going on on screen for once. Hmm. Hmm. But the thing is, what topic do I talk about? <laughs> it's the real thing. But, uh, that's the mission complete. Let's see, now that I've done the secret mission, I actually start to, you know, open the gate for the main part, for, as the main objective to the mission. Huh. But, uh, yeah. Another secret mission in the bag. So far, we've done every single one. like that, we open the exit to the level. Now then, any pauses that you see me make, but before that, boss fight time. Yeah, any pauses that you see me make that I don't cut out is me double checking, make sure that I grabbed everything before I progress onto the next area. Because I have two guides open, with, open when I do this. One is for the blue orb fragments in the secret rooms. And the other is a general purpose guide because uh, Devil May Cry 2 has some secrets that uh, unless you really go out of your way to find, you ain't going to get them just by casually playing the game. Like, uh, it's definitely ob it's more obvious in the next mission that there are some things that are a bitch and a half to get if you don't 
Pay attention and look around. But anyway, this room's the boss room, but for the boss to show up, we need to kill all of the flying Cupid demons, as well as the golems. And the annoying thing about the golems is that they regenerate. Which is stupidly fucking ass man to deal with, but... You make do with what you got. What I got is a sword that can, likes to cut through demons, like butter. And now for our boss fight. It's Mothra, ladies and gentlemen. A demonic Mothra, but Mothra nonetheless. Mothra here is actually real fucking easy. She only does two things. Fly and lay eggs. And her real name is Noctopteran. Like I said, she flies and spits out larvae. The larvae are the tremor-looking motherfuckers trying to eat you. The main gimmick of this fight is dealing enough damage to her while also dealing with her children. Fortunately, her children are really easy to deal with with a couple of rockets into their fat fucking mouths. Honestly, the only reason you would ever get hit by the larva is if you're either A, not paying attention, or B, mistimed the dodge input because of, uh, your inexperience with the dodging mechanics. And I say inexperience because, well, I'm rusty, that's why. So getting hit one or two times is the end of the world because there are health orbs around the arena, as you can see. I will say this though, Devil May Cry 2, while easy, ish, keyword, ish, because uh, this game will kill you on normal mode if you let it. Actually, now that I think about it, I think difficulty for Devil May Cry 1 and 2 is really uh, blown out of proportion by people. Because Devil May Cry 1 is only really hard at the start, but once you get past the first boss fight with Phantom, the game actually gets rather easy until you fade off, face off against Virgil for the last time. But that was just my experience. Of course, uh, if you're playing higher difficulties, then more power to you. I will defer to your judgment on the difficulty. Oh, and by the way, as you get uh, eaten, you turn to the Devil Trigger when they explode. Key advice, don't get eaten. So, yeah. While Devil May Cry... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. While Devil May Cry 2 is easy... Keyword, easy. I'm at least thankful that, that the boss rooms actually have health or pickups, just so in case you do get hit and you actually need it. Now, funnily enough, the Mothra's going to go down before we kill all of her children, which is hilarious. Because when she uh, takes the final hit, she loses her wings, gets down on the ground, and I think she plants more children. I was too busy shooting at her fucking larva children in order to pay attention to her. But as you can see, one last rocket, which I don't think actually kills her. I think her death is scripted when, you lose, when she loses all her health. But uh, now it's just time for cleanup because the boss fight doesn't end until all the children are dead as well, which is um, a bit annoying, but uh, not the worst thing in the world because the rocket launcher goes into the floor. Also, nothing a few bursts of Devil Trigger can't fix. Funnily enough, once the last two, they speed up in their attacks. And obviously the best way in order to increase the fire rate of the rocket launcher is to do dodge rolls. Ow. Dodge roll, fire. Dodge roll, fire. As soon as the rocket leaves the freaking uh, rocket launcher, just press the dodge button. And I pick up a little health just to uh, cut myself off, because why not, right? But with that, Mothra has been defeated, and now the stage is over. Now then, do I go around the arena? No, I do not go around the arena collecting the excess health orbs. That is fine. But yeah, mission complete. Rather easy. And of course, my score is uh, CSSDS. It's a B, as always. Ha <laughs> ha, fantastic. 
All right then, next mission. Mission 11. He wields a spear and is obeyed by the wolves. His single eye possesses knowledge and hate. He's the one who brings misfortune. Guy posts for the letters. Chapter 9, Clause 6. Time to face off against Bulwark. <coughs> and in this mission, I decide to upgrade Rebellion to level 4 after I think about it for a second. It's like, do I want to upgrade the rocket launcher? Maybe upgrade Ebony and Ivory? No, upgrade Rebellion. Get that to level 4. I think the maximum level of weapon to have in this game is 5. I think? It's gonna cost me 40 grand to find out. But we're gonna get our last mi yeah, our last weapons and our devil heart in this mission. The devil heart is a pain in the ass to get because of the puzzle required. And the weapons are missable. Fortunately, missing the weapons isn't as bad as you think because you can get those in later missions. And here's this first secret. It's a rather obvious one, I would say. Secret room level 14. It's like, hey, here's a uh, door with an eyeball on it. It's like, hmm, does this do anything? It's like the one. It's like one of the few doors that's like, oh, I should probably look, investigate this to see if it does anything. Unlike the rest of the secret room doors, where they're just plain old doors that blend into the background scenery. <sighs> I really wish they. Uh, had them like they do in Devil May Cry 4 where there's a uh, little uh, symbol indicators to tell me it's like, oh, this is a secret mission location. Nope. Nope. Just plain old background scenery that you have to know about either beforehand or look up during. Ugh. Anyway, this secret mission is just me fighting a bunch of goats. Funnily enough, rocket launcher. Very effective against goat people. Goat. Goat men. Goat demons? Goat links. Easy mission, easy money, and easy orbs. And there's my fragment, and here is another blue orb to collection. Getting close to halfway through our second HP bar. Alright then, time to move on through the rest of the level. Lovely decor, by the way. Especially when we enter PS1 Gex 2 uh, level design on the tile set. This reminds me of the, uh... Oh, which level is it in Gex 2? Uh... It's the, uh, Chinese level, I think. Oh, so you don't know what I'm talking about? Gex is a, uh, platforming... Technically, series from the PS1 era. It's a trilogy where the main protagonist is a um, giant gecko that likes to talk and make references, specifically about movie and TV. And he basically goes through the dimension of media in order to defeat the big bat, essentially. In the first game, he gets uh, forcefully dragged into his TV. The second game, the uh, Secret Service slash FBI slash CIA have him do it. And in three, I don't know because I don't have th the third game and I never played it. And it's been a, f a good 20 plus years since I've actually played any of them, so yeah. And I'm just busy uh, checking to make sure that I'm going, that I've not missed anything as always, so I may need to cut this out if it doesn't start moving in a few seconds. No, wait, there we go. So yeah, that tile set is a, a blast from the past. Nice to know that we're going through the uh, cult lair, catacombs, tombs, whatever this whatever this architecture is called. Of course, I'm wondering how the fuck it stays afloat in the mid-air. Classy, by the way. Classic. Lock me in. Hello, vases. Vases? Pottery? Destroy them, red orbs come out. Fantastic. And, of course, we're still fighting the demonic monkeys. And here is where I find out that uh, if you do, uh, eventually, you'll see me do it. Uh, you do four, sla four normal slashes with the rebellion. There it is. And if you have the shotgun equipped, you can do another, you can do a shotgun blast. I think one of the main criticisms that I think is actually valid 
with Devil May Cry 2 is that the game doesn't tell you all of the combos that you can perform with all the weapon combinations. For example, the game doesn't tell you how to do the, what I, what I just did, the, uh, shuck, the slashing shotgun blast thing. Or how to do the, um, I forget what it's called. The move where you twirl the shotgun around yourself and do an AoE blast. Stuff like that. If the game actually told you how to do that stuff, either when you unlock the weapon or when you figure out how to do it for the first time, I imagine that a lot of people would not be as um, critical to the combat system as it is. But then again, people overly critique everything to a fucking asinine degree nowadays. Hell, even back then. But hey, room filled with orbs, so let's collect them all. And only one of these alcoves is a secret uh, orb stash. There it is. I always forget that the shotgun knocks you back a little bit when you shoot it in the air. Not very good for platforming, I will say that. Doing a quick uh, sweep around the room to make sure I don't miss anything before we activate the key. <sighs> drinking coffee while I was playing, I'm drinking coffee as I am commentating. This is gonna be fun. Spin, spin, and turn, baby, as the room onward is open. Now we just gotta deal with the uh, demonic chorus here. Or demono chorus, I should say. Or as I like to say, demonic cupids. Yeah, don't stand still while they try to do anything. Otherwise, you will take damage. And no one likes taking damage more than they need to. I really should upgrade Ebony and Ivory one of these days. Because I use them a lot. And like they say, that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Now I just need to, you know, perform basic platforming in order to get back up. And of course, my uh, inability to platform in this game is apparent. Especially if you saw yester yesterday, last, the last episode where I can't climb a fucking pipe to save my life. Made me have to restart. Okay, now we're just gonna run on forward through the corridors, smashing every single piece of pottery we get for more orbs. There was a health pickup in there. And hello! Orb statue. Of course, it doesn't help that we miss the swings. And of course, as always, I'm double checking and triple checking because I'm a paranoid son of a bitch. It's time for Indiana Jones shenanigans. Da 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 da. Into a freaking wall trap. Fantastic. Now the gimmick here is destroy the wall. The thing is, though, we gotta be fast enough in order to do so. Which is why, let's see, we have speed heart equipped. I'm pretty sure I could have gotten it before the thing came back down, but I decided to be safe. Of course, I don't know why. Oh, yeah. The bright idea was like, hey, can I use my rocket launcher to hit it from here? The survey says no. Now then. If you are keen-eyed or you've played this game before, you realize that I've missed the sword that's actually in the level. What you're supposed to do to get the sword is to run back through and jump on the platform. 
Well, not the spike trap. You're supposed to jump onto the doorway that's behind you. But I decide to look around the room. See what my options are. I'm thinking that... Oh, the switch activates this. Which will pro which uh, is actually an elevator. I do a face palm when I figure that out. When I finally turn on the switch. Which makes this entire room's platforming completely fucking negligible. Now I believe this is where I realize... Or no. It's later. But hey. Orbs to collect. And also one of these doors is the secret mission. Which I have an inkling of as the doors are rather suspicious to me. Now if only the rest of the doors in this game were like that. Yes, I suck at platforming. I know. You don't need to worry about that. So rather than you watch me jump around like a damn fool, how about I just cut to the parts that are important, like finding the secret room that's in here, or getting the weaponry, huh? But I eventually figure out that this is the door I need to open first for the secret room. Level 15! Which is just fighting golems, which is a chore. And like they say, that is that, and that's another secret mission complete. The only real problem about this one is that a fucking goat demon shows up in the middle of it, but that's the only one. Or in that, simple and easy. Okay, now that I've gotten the secret mission out of the way, time to cut. To where I figure out, oh, this is where I need to go. Okay, we made it back to the spike pit. As you can see, it's not falling anymore. So, come over here, jump up into the ledge. Fantastic, follow the uh, snake imagery. And just style on the wall for a good measure, and we get the Merciless. A sword with snakes engraved. It's not powerful, but has a wide range attack. Ooh, excuse me. And a blue orb that's also in this room. And if you're a keen eye, you see that seal that's above on the ceiling? That's where our second... Those are where our last set of guns are. Anyway, the Merciless has the longest reach of all the weaponry, but it's also the weakest. So take your pi pill and poison. Do you want Rebellion, which is a balanced weapon? Do you want Merciless, which has long reach, but is w on the weaker side? Or do you want Vendetta, which is the uh, shortest of all three, but hits the hardest? Eventually, it doesn't really matter when you upgrade everything to max anyway, and you're a master at the game, and it doesn't matter at all. Now the fun part. Me doing platforming. As much as I would love to subjugate you poor bastards to my inability to figure out how to do jumps correctly, I'm just gonna... cut to where uh, we enter the... Uh, the corridor for the submachine guns. Because that's the final guns that we're getting. MP5Ks. The most badass of the MP5 line. So, yeah. We'll see you there. And here is the location, ladies and gentlemen. The aerial heart makes this area a uh, breeze to go through so long as you have the double trigger gauge. Because that way you can just ignore the platforms entirely. Anyway, here's our reward. Compact submachine guns with high accuracy. MP5K is acquired. The coolest looking of the MP5 line. Now, unfortunately, these guns, while the fastest firing, also do the least amount of damage. You can see a trend here. So yeah, the aerial heart makes this area a breeze so long as you have enough double trigger gauge. Anyway, let's uh, flip the switch, activate the elevator, and have me face palm in real time. Well, not really. Like, okay, let's activate the switch and get to the end of the level. This is when I realize that's like, oh, wait a minute. I get to the bottom. It's like, what is this? It's an elevator. See, if it wasn't just for the invisible, invisible, for the uh, platforming, this area wouldn't be that annoying. But between the uh, red platforms and the purple platforms disappearing, here's the way to the end of the level. There, there were some uh, jars here that I smashed to get some red ores because I came here by mistake. Anyway, here 
is the one devil heart that I always miss on Dante's uh, playthrough because the puzzle involves these three jars over here. You're, you're supposed to smash those three jars fast enough so when all three are gone, the barrier surrounding the devil heart disappears. Obviously, I'm not remembering this, so I'm thinking, oh wait, these things look suspicious. Do they do anything? No, they do not. So I decided to look this uh, up real fast and it jogs my memory. It's like, oh, destroy the jars fast enough and get to the heart before the before they come back. So this t this is a rather um interesting one. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll just swap swords to make this a little bit easier. I don't think it really matters, but um yeah. Destroy all three of these practically at the same time, run to the devil heart and get it. It's a pain in the ass. So I'll just uh, save you the uh, trouble of uh, me throwing my head against a brick wall here. And with that, the healing heart is required. A magic stone with the heart of a merciful goddess. Fantastic. The one devil heart that I never get is now mine. Fantastic. What this one does is that it allows us to recover health faster while in devil trigger. So pick your poison. Do you want more attack potency or do you want extra healing? And for here, I decided to swap it up for Bulwark by going with quick heart, flame heart, and do I stick with the healing or... Or, yeah, I swap back to off offense. Now, funnily enough, Bulwark is actually a quick boss fight. Because it's just him and his two wolf... Bu fuck, fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Shit. I can't speak now. It's just Bulwark and his two wolves. So it's time to face the uh, reanimated corpse of Odin's uh, human visage. And sadly for Bulwark, he's actually a really easy fight. Just destroy the wolf, just kill the wolves first, and he can actually, he's actually really easy to deal with. Because Bulwark's main gimmick is to uh, basically keep you out of the air while the wolves are out. And his melee attacks are actually really easy to dodge anyway, so rather than me just commentating over the fight, I'll just let you watch since it's less than five minutes.
that is it for Bulvert, ladies and gentlemen, and that's it for this mission. If it wasn't for my absurd platforming, uh, this is, uh, mission's actually kind of short. And I'm saving you a good bit of time, because th this uh, video length is a little bit over... It's like 51 minutes long. Anyway, I've been NoGod21. This has been Let's Play Devil May Cry 2. In the next episode, we chase after Arius through the cult's basement, basically. But until then, thank you for watching our wonderful evening, and I'll see you all next time.